Hello there, we are continuing with the evolution of gods and religion series. The sky has helped humans in many ways, especially during the times when there were no calendars or clocks or GPS systems. I have done a three part series titled Story of the Sky where I mentioned how the sky helped our forefathers live and survive. I shall link it up in the description if you haven't watched it yet. Now the sky and its celestial bodies are the source of many myths and stories. One such story could be of the goddess Durga. The inception of this goddess is an interesting one and for that one does not need to look inside a religious book but one has to gaze up in the sky. Durga is none other than Virgo, a constellation that you see in the sky. Amazed? Stay on till the end of this video and all will be crystal clear. Please share this video for the benefit of others and subscribe to the channel for similar interesting videos. Hi, I am Anand and I welcome you to Pale Blue Thought, the channel which debunks zero science and embraces scientific temper. Durga is a major Hindu goddess worshipped as mother goddess Mahadevi or Shakti. She is associated with protection, strength, motherhood, destruction and wars. She is mostly worshipped after spring and autumn harvest, especially during the festivals of Durga Puja, Durga Ashtami, Vijaya Dashami, Deepavali and Navratri. The most popular legend associated with the goddess is of a killing of Mahishasura, a half buffalo demon who got a boon from Brahma that only a woman can kill him. Soon he started to attack the world and the scared gods went to the Trimurti who combined their powers together and created a woman Shakti or Adi Parashakti or Durga. The goddess is often depicted as riding upon the back of a fierce lion holding a bow in her outstretched arm. The Asura Mahisha is shown as a powerful monster with the body of a giant and the head of a great bull buffalo brandishing a large bat shaped club. According to the ancient text, Durga defeats Mahishasura by chopping off his head. So where does the story relate to the sky and Vogo you may ask? Here is where the connection is. You all know the sky is divided into 12 constellations or groups of stars. Out of these 12 constellations, we are concerned about 4 for this story. Virgo, Leo, Orion and Taurus. If you have watched my story of the sky, you would have learned that the way people remembered the constellations and passing of time was by making up stories about the constellations. They literally played joining the dots using the stars on the vast sky and created characters on the sky. One such character was Virgo, a set of stars which they thought resembled a virgin woman. Now there was this constellation which appeared about two hours prior to when Virgo rises in the east. That was Leo. And Leo resembled a lion. So the ancients picturized a woman riding on a lion and the story took shape. In fact, it was not just the Indians who saw both these constellations in this manner. So many goddesses in ancient myths from many different cultures are depicted as accompanied by lions or as riding upon lions. Some examples include the goddess Rhea of ancient Greece, the goddesses Ishtar and Inanna of ancient Mesopotamia and even occasionally the goddess Isis of ancient Egypt. Additionally, the Norse goddess Freya whose chariot is drawn by cats rather than by lions may also be connected to the same celestial patterns. Many early depictions of Durga in paintings and temple walls depict Durga holding up a torch in her hands. If you see the constellation Virgo, you can see this depiction clearly. This torch can be identified with the constellation Coma Berenices which is seen in the sky directly above the outstretched arm of the constellation Virgo. In some depictions, Durga is seen holding a cobra or some sort of a serpent in her hand or around her body. If you want to go back to the sky, you can see the constellation Hydra which is represented as a serpent because that is how we picturized it from over here. Hydra is conveniently situated beneath the constellation Virgo. So now we have a lady, a lion and a serpent. The plot thickens. Now coming back to Leo and Virgo. Virgo rises around two hours after Leo. Now what arose before that? First rises Taurus, then after two hours Gemini, two hours later Cancer and then Leo and finally Virgo. Now there is another constellation which lies near to Gemini, the famous Orion or the Hunter. But if you notice the hunter, he too appears to hold up something like a club. But one important aspect is that the hunter does not seem to have a head. But we need a head to complete the picture. So what do we have rising before that? Taurus, the bull. 
So if you imagine that Taurus is the head, then the picture becomes that of a bull-headed being, Mahishasur. Now we know that stars and all other celestial objects appear to us as rising from the east. That is because the earth rotates from west to east and so everything on the sky appears to us as being visible from the east first. Then it moves to the west and we say that they have set. Now if you imagine rising from the east as being born, then something setting in the west can be depicted as being slain or killed. So as Virgo rises up on the eastern sky during the night, it's around that time that Orion and Taurus sets in the western horizon. So now we have the characters and the storyline. There was a demon who hunted down people and who had the head of a bull and he holds up a club. Now a woman comes riding a lion, namely Virgo and Leo, and slays or kills the demon by chopping off its bull head. The world is saved. Now the story is complete. You can now know the times when these constellations rise up in the sky, their order, and using that, know how much time has elapsed since the sun set and how much time it is to go till morning. You have clearly marked an area of the sky using some star formations and an associated story. How cool is that, isn't it? Need more evidence? Look at this temple statue from the Mahishamardini temple situated at Mahabalipuram, Tamil Nadu. The way Mahishasura is depicted in the Mahishamardini rock temple is fascinating. It's almost like the artist drew inspiration from the constellation Orion in the night sky. Notice how Mahisha's posture with one bent knee resembles Orion's leg. And that wide belt with a hanging sash is a lot like Orion features up there in the heavens. Now if you know about the constellation Orion, you would remember the main features of Orion, its famous belt and the hanging sword or sash. So now you know the real story behind the legend of the goddess Durga. These were tales that people created to know the time and mark areas in the sky. But as the stories got passed on, people kept on adding their bits to it and brought these gods and goddesses from the sky down to the earth. I am sure many won't even remember the beginnings of these stories and instead think of these as stories in religious texts. As the country celebrates the victory of Shakti over the demonic Mahishasur as Durga Pujo or Dasara or Vijayadashmi, the timing is right for me to remind everyone about the real story. It was just a way for the ancients to mark the sky and know the passage of time. Hey, don't skip this video yet. I have only told one side of the story. Now the people on the other side of the globe had a different story for the same patterns. If you look at the constellation Virgo again, you can make out that the star on the far end of her hand is very bright. This can be made to appear that she is holding something in her hand. Perhaps it could be a fruit. In fact, the ancient name for this star was Vindemiatrix, which meant the grape harvestress in Greek. Today it is known as Epsilon Virginis. Now if you pan your eyes towards the left of Virgo, you can join some dots and make a constellation named Boatus. This resembles a man standing there. Now if you look at Virgo and Boatus as a whole, it will appear that Virgo appears to be giving a fruit to a man. Sounds familiar? But we need one more character, right? A talking snake to make the story complete. You don't have to look far. Remember, I told you about the constellation Hydra, which is part of the Durga story? Hydra is still there. Now we have a snake, a woman giving a man a fruit. Now imagine, the sky is a big garden. Now as we approach dawn, two bright objects appear during different times of the year. One is the star Sirius, which appears just before dawn, which is a very bright star. At other times, we can see Venus just before dawn. The reason why we see Venus just before dawn is because Venus is the second closest planet from the Sun. The orbit of Venus is within the orbit of Earth and Sun, so it always appears close to the Sun. So during the days when we can see Venus, it always appears close to the Sun, which means during dawn. At other times, Venus is not visible due to the light from the Sun. And Venus too is a very bright planet. So now we have a main character which could be either Venus or Sirius who sees this woman giving a fruit to a man. So he asks the man as to why did he partake the fruit, to which the man replies that he was tempted by the woman. So he asks the woman and the woman puts the entire blame on the serpent. Now while all this is happening, Hydra is getting close to setting in the western horizon. So the owner of the garden curses the snake by saying, may your head be crushed by the humans 
meaning its head is about to set in the west and is going to be no longer visible. Then once Hydra disappears, next in line is Virgo who is cursed with a painful birth and then the man gets cursed. There you go, the story of Adam and Eve and the original sin. Same patterns in the sky, different regions and cultures, different stories with the same aim to note passage of time and to mark out areas in the sky. And yet, today we fight amongst ourselves over these fairy tales. That is my main intention of doing this series, to show the world that all these stories that you hold so close to your heart and say is part of my faith were really just mnemonics or allegories of the ancient man. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found at least some of the information new and useful. If you did, please share it with your friends and family to spread some scientific temper. Looking forward to your comments, memberships, super thanks or donations via buy me a coffee or UPID. Currently, YouTube is the only source of income for me and I would request you to support the channel and help it grow. I shall be back with some more stories about the evolution of gods and religions. Until then, it's bye bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.